Hi everybody. There's no doubt that Forrest Finn's military career has played an important part of who he is. In this video, he shares some memories of some of the very interesting people that he's met along the way. And Peg Coe was chairman of the board in those days, and, and uh, I'd go to the parties at her house. I remember one time I sat on the couch with Jimmy Doolittle for 30 minutes, just the two of us talking. He got the Medal of Honor for leading the B-25s against the Japanese right after Pearl Harbor. And, and, and I'd been a fighter pilot, and we had a lot to talk about. And mm -hmm. Wonderful guy. And, I mean, I'm, I, I may be the world's greatest schmoozer. I, I love to, to meet people who have done something. And mm -hmm. in one of my books, I think it was Too Far to Walk, my book, I went to see Mrs. MacArthur in New York. She lived in the Waldorf Towers next to the Waldorf Astoria. Mm -hmm. I got out of the cab and the doorman there, I told the doorman I'd like to speak to Mrs. MacArthur. He says, you want to speak to Mrs. MacArthur? I said, yeah. He said, okay. And he, he, I, evidently nobody had ever asked him that question before, but he called her on the phone and, and I'm talking to her and I said, well, this is Major Forrest Finn, United States Air Force, retired. I said, your, your husband was a hero of mine and I just wanted to say hello to you. Well, she invited me up. She served coffee and, and tea or whatever it was, and mm -hmm. she showed me the General's Medal of Honor, and uh, she, she loved the Mets. She wanted to talk about the Mets baseball team, and, and I was sitting in a chair here. There's a window here and a wall, and she was sitting right there, and from, from where I was sitting, you could walk about 10 or 12 feet, go through a door, and go over to the wall that over, overlooked the street. I mean, they were, were in the penthouse apartment at the Waldorf Towers. And, but between these two spaces, maybe 40 feet, you could see the wooden floor through the carpet. I mean, it was threadbare. And it, it wasn't terrible, but it was bad enough. And she saw me looking at that, and she said, the general paced. The general paced, and she left. So she left it. Well, there's a guy that owned the end of the uh, Waldorf Towers. I forget his name. They built he built Sun City out in Arizona, but he owned the New York Yankees at one time. Anyway, uh, when the general came back from Japan, he told him that he could rent that Waldorf, the, the penthouse apartment in the Waldorf Towers for $400 a month as long as he lived, as long as he wanted to. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was renting for like, I think $2,500 a month or, or more. I mean, this is the Waldorf Towers. And after a few years, MacArthur died and his wife stayed there another 15 or 20 years or so. I think the figures may be wrong, but she stayed there a long time. Mm -hmm. The story about Mrs. MacArthur's threadbare carpet was really touching. And I think that the stories that Forrest Finn shares with us are really priceless. In this next story, Forrest Finn talks about Erwin Rommel. Rommel was a decorated officer in World War I and a general in World War II, and he earned the name of the Desert Fox. In 1944, Rommel was implicated in a plot to assassinate Hitler, and Hitler got wind of it. We were up in that meeting, I remember that, and Hitler told him that, that if he'd commit suicide, he'd take care of his family, but if he didn't, he said, I'm gonna kill you and your family, and so Rommel committed suicide, and I knew that, and, and uh, I knocked on her door, and her son, Manfred, came to the door, he spoke some English, and, she invited me in, and we talked for 30 minutes, and, and Manfred is kind of translating back and, back and forth, and it, it was a good meeting. And there were pictures of the field marshal around, and, and later on, when I was a fighter pilot in Germany at Bitburg, we used to go to gunnery school in Libya out of Tripoli. We had a gunnery range out of Tripoli, and on the weekends, I'd get in an old army jeep and drive down in the desert there where 
Rommel was fighting General Patton in those great tank battles, and a lot of those, a lot of the stuff was still there. The tanks were there, and oh. different things, and and uh, I mean, I was just walking around, and, and uh, a couple of guys with me, and I looked over there, and there was a martyr, a live martyr, laying there about this long and this big around, and I wasn't going to touch it, but it had some. It had a tag on the side of it, placard, and I went over and got down on my knees and looked to, to read what it said, and about four inches away from that, beside it, was a stone arrow point, a stone arrow point, 2,000 year old stone arrow point. A strange feeling came over me. So, I told myself, I was looking at wars, laying on top of wars, laying on top of wars. Yeah. I mean, how long are we going to... Plato said only the, only the dead will know the end of wars. Wow. It's a lot of things to think about. You know, once in a while, something hits you in the nose really hard, like that hit me. I mean, uh, yeah. it harkened me back 2,000 years. I mean... When all that was wheat, wheat farm, and mm -hmm. I think you guys would agree, what an interesting life Forrest Finn has lived. I'm really glad I could share these videos with you. I'll catch up with you guys down the road. Bye. I don't know what will happen to me. Will I be remembered in this century, or will I be forgotten like dust in the wind? Or the talk of the town that we are, that we are living in I don't know.